Welcome back to our series on semi-homemade items. I'm Mindy Turner with New Mexico State University Cooperative Extension Service, and I am your Curry County Family and Consumer Science Agent. This series we're focusing on using some pre-made items to help save you a little time. In some cases, you're making up your own items, so it might even save you some money and be more cost effective. And uh, Last time we talked a little bit about appetizers and some things you could put together that then you could use maybe as even a snack or even as a full meal, depending on how you uh, prepared it and what you wanted to use it for. So remember all of the recipes that I share are included in our newsletter, which we do send out every couple of months. If you'd like to be on that list to receive a newsletter, you can go to our website, curryextension.nmsu.edu. There'll be a place under Family Health and Wellness where you can sign up to receive it. You can choose if you'd like to get it by email or if you'd like to receive it hard copy in the mail. Or you can always call our office, we're the Curry County Extension Office, and we'll get you signed up to receive those. So let's get right started tonight. We're gonna talk a little bit about main dishes. Some things you can put together quickly that you can bring in so that you can feed your family when you're in a hurry. Just kind of having a little plan ahead of time by using things that are already prepared part way for you. Now we talked a lot last time, you gotta read the labels and consider the nutrition of what you're putting together. So sometimes pre-packaged things are gonna be a little higher in sodium. So consider if you're putting together two or three pre-packaged items, you wanna be sure that you're looking for those low sodium items to use and put together. And you're not gonna to wanna to add additional salt in the parts that you're actually making yourself. So um, I have just a few things to share with you related to main dishes, things that are simple to put together. What I really like about using uh, partially pre-made items when you get ready to put your dinner together is you have a lot of control over the size of it. If you're feeding just one or two people, you don't need to make a full casserole of something unless it's something that's gonna freeze well or that you wanna eat it all week long. If you're feeding a large family, you may need two dishes this size to get everybody fed and full before they leave the table. I'm feeding growing boys, and so it seems like no matter what I fix, there's never enough of it. So I totally understand that. So when we talk about being able to scale what you're making to fit your family, know that I know where you're coming from. So a couple of things that I wanted to share with you, and I'm just gonna show you real quick how easy they go together, and then tell you how you could finish it off baking uh, to get that taken care of. So the first thing, cheater enchiladas. This is something that uh, when I saw it, I thought, oh, that's a fantastic idea. It would work well in our family because what's in here, these are just um, simple frozen rolled tacos that you purchase in the freezer section at the store. You can get chicken, you can get uh, beef and cheese, you can get ones that already have chili in them, depending on what kind you like. Or maybe you have a favorite restaurant or place where you pick these up, or maybe you make your own, and then you have leftovers. You can put some in the freezer, pull them out, and use them in just this way. What I really like about this is that my kids are not crazy about enchiladas. It's not something they're gonna want so much to eat, but my husband and I would rather have enchiladas than rolled tacos just out of the freezer. Um, my kids love these for snack, other things. So this is an easy way, you just layer them in there. You can see I've chosen to use a smaller dish because I just want to feed a couple of people, but you could definitely use more and layer them into your larger nine by 13 type dish. So it's pretty easy, you layer those in there, grab your enchilada sauce, I have just a red sauce here. If you make your own, if you prefer green, uh, if you want a cream sauce, we're gonna talk a little bit about how to make a cream soup uh, you could do any of those things because you're just going to pour it into the dish right on top of your tacos. A little cheese, okay, and if you guys have watched, you know I typically have Colby Jack. It gives it a nice variegated color, uh, and it's just something I, I prefer, but you could have any kind of cheese that you like, some grated cheese to throw on top of that. Pop it in the oven, 350, 10 to 15 minutes. The other great thing about this is you could also microwave it. Your tacos are not gonna be quite as crispy. They're gonna be a little softer if you do it that way, but definitely if you're in a hurry, if you need something quick, something that you can throw together and have it be a little something extra with that semi-homemade part to it than just throwing something in the microwave. 
Okay, so this one, and I did make a big dish of this one today so that I could give you a better perspective. This is a meatball sub casserole. Super easy, super filling, something that would be great um, as things open back up related to COVID and we start having more family gatherings and group gatherings, church potlucks, things like that would be an excellent dish to take along for that. And it's made with French bread, just plain old French bread. This is a loaf I bought at the store, already sliced and everything for me. So again, when time is short, something simple to pull together. And then I cheated even a step further in putting this one together in that I used already pre-made garlic toast. So what you're gonna wanna do, whether you're using the, the regular bread, if you're using it, you're gonna wanna butter it, add a little garlic. Most people will add garlic salt if they're making um, garlic toast, but you don't have to, you can just use a little garlic powder or some uh, Italian seasoning, throw that on there, stick them in the oven, broil them for just a minute, get them toasty, because you're gonna want your bottom layer to be toasted. It's gonna help keep that bread from getting soggy from the rest of what we're gonna put in here. So you get them toasted, and you can see I just layered those across the bottom, toasted side up, and then I just poured meatballs on the top. I did go ahead and spray this with a nonstick uh, cooking spray so that hopefully everything will come out when we get to the other end. Now there's some variations on this dish. If you want it to be a little richer, a little more filling, you can actually put in a cream cheese layer like you would do for a lasagna. Um, for what my purpose is, I chose not to do that. That's gonna add quite a bit of fat. If you do choose to do that, remember to look for your low fat uh, type items to make that layer to go in there. And then we're just gonna add the frozen meatballs across the top. This is just spaghetti sauce. Again, if you make your own, if you buy canned, if you purchase the jar kind, whatever it is that you like for a marinara red spaghetti sauce is what you're gonna put in here. So we're just gonna pour it across the top, get it all down in there with our meatballs. Okay, and then for this one, typically Italian dishes, we use a lot of mozzarella cheese. This is just shredded mozzarella. We're gonna spread it around all on the top. And I figured to get this one to cover, we would need a little extra. So we're gonna put that in there. Again, with mozzarella, you're gonna to wanna to look and see for your low fat, your part skim, so that it's not your whole fats that you're adding to that, okay? Moving some things out of the way. All right, so that would be a meatball sub casserole. You're gonna, again, heat the oven to 350, pop this in there in about 30 minutes, it's gonna set up. Your meatballs should be cooked all the way through. A lot of what you're doing with this one uh, your frozen meatballs are pre-cooked, so you're thawing them out and heating them through and then making it set into an actual casserole. So that should take about the 30 minutes to get that done. Okay, again, great dish to take along to share somewhere or to feed your, your growing family. All right, so for the third one that I wanted to share with you, kind of a fun take on chicken pot pie making it a little, if you've ever made from scratch, chicken pot pie is a wonderful. If you do make your own and want to share, our office is at 818 Main Street. Feel free to just drop that by. This is a shortcut in how we can put together a chicken pot pie, that comfort food, those meals that make us feel like um, when it's, it's a little cool outside and we wanna be warm and toasty inside, chicken pot pie is a great way to do that. So this one again, pretty simple to put together. What's in here is um, a can of cream of chicken soup, and then just a bag. I just had a frozen a bag of frozen mixed vegetables. This one is the corn, the carrots, and the peas, just like you would see in uh, a regular chicken pot pie. This package actually had some green beans in it as well, which is a favorite of my family. So you can pick and choose which vegetables you would like to put in here, and. You can, you'll see recipes where you use basically these same ingredients and you heat it up on the stove and you whisk the sauce uh, and do all of those things. Again, I cheated just a little. I microwaved it, thawed my veggies, put my soup in. Because of that, I'm not gonna use as much broth. The broth helps give you a texture, it helps bring out those flavors. So you're, you're probably gonna want that in there, 
Uh, but, and actually the recipe I was working from said one to two cups depending on your preference. I'm just gonna go ahead and put in about a quarter cup because I don't want to thin it too much. I just want to give it that correct texture for when it cooks up. Okay, so cream soup, a little broth, mixed vegetables, chicken. This is actually a rotisserie chicken, just shredded. You can cook your own chicken, you can use canned chicken, whatever it is that's your preference that's easy for you that you like. Again, for saving the time, Typically, a rotisserie cooked chicken is going to be more expensive than a raw chicken you take home and cook yourself. So like we keep talking about, evaluate your resources and see where your priority is for that meal. And is it your time to get everybody fed or is it your cost? Always, if you have the time to make those things happen, you're definitely going to want to analyze those costs. And like we talked last time, look for those publications that we share. Uh, related to your budgeting and how you're spending your money that are all coming through Cooperative Extension Service through New Mexico State University providing you with that research-based information. So we're going to add the chicken. Let me see. I lost my fork that I had to do this. Add, shred it as small or leave as big a chunks as you want. I like big chunks of chicken in my pot pie. We're going to put in about half this container and just whip that up. Now, cream soups are one of the things, they're kind of a staple for a lot of people who put together, particularly casseroles, there's a lot of things you would add cream soup to, to provide that texture. If you are not a fan of the different types or if if you know that because of the fat content or the sodium content, you can make your own cream soup to fit with basically building these types of recipes. And all you need is a little butter, a little flour, uh, some milk, and a little broth. You typically chicken broth, but it could be a vegetable broth or something else if that's really what you prefer. So you can find that recipe in the newsletter as well. We're not gonna prepare that one today. All right, so once this is all mixed up, kind of gelled together, feels like it's setting with the consistency we want. Again, I sprayed this pan with some nonstick cooking spray. And I'm just gonna layer in the pot pie piece. You know, and look how pretty it is. The colors are just beautiful. Okay, so simple enough, right? Of course, the part that we all find to be difficult with our pot pie is typically the crust. Why we end up purchasing a completely uh, pre-made chicken pot pie so we don't have to mess with making the crust. So what we're gonna put for our crust on this chicken pot pie are canned biscuits. And I know you're thinking those look a little weird. That's because they're pre-baked. We put them in the oven, baked them for half the time that it says on the can. Now if you choose to use frozen biscuits, again, if you make homemade biscuits and you wanna have them already rolled out and cut, Pre-bake them for about half the time, they'll start to puff up. Then we're going to put them into our pan. Now what we wanna do is we wanna flip them. So the way we had them cooking on the pan for pre-bake, we wanna put them the opposite way, upside down, in our pan. Okay, that's gonna ensure, because you can, if you, when you touch them, you'll see that the top side has already started to, to crisp a little, and the bottom side is still pretty doughy. So we wanna get that even baking by putting them in that way. So once you get that layered in there, okay, so no chopping, no, I mean, all of that just went in straight into our pan and you're gonna cook this one at 400 and it should only take about 10 minutes. Okay, it's gonna get all that set together. It's gonna to brown your biscuits. You wanna make sure your biscuits don't burn and that's gonna make you a semi-homemade chicken pot pie. So now you have cheater enchiladas, you have a meatball sub casserole, and you have a chicken pot pie, all of which you can make for an easy weeknight dinner, something that you can make obviously to take if you have a sick friend, someone you wanna take something over that's easy for them to just pop in the oven and have, then these are great uh, avenues to do that. 
Again, I'm Mindy Turner with the Cooperative Extension Service here in Curry County. Please, please check out our website, curryextension.nmsu.edu. There's a place in there where you can enter a question. If you have a question about anything related to family health and wellness, we'll be happy to get back with you on that and provide you some resources through the university that uh, will hopefully provide you the education and answer to the questions that you need. You can also call our office to get answers to those questions. Uh, we are open now, but we are at 50% staffing due to COVID. So if you would like to come by and visit with us, just call and make an appointment so we can make sure the person you need to speak with is in the office at the time. Thank you very much. Next time, we're gonna be talking about some side dishes that might go with one of these casseroles or some other wonderful thing that you're preparing for dinner. So tune back here to see us. Thank you and have a good night.